For those of you who are longing for hymns from the past, you have come to the right place this morning. If you are a history buff, you may find that today's message is of some interest. If you are wondering why you are here today, a survey has found that 47% of the people attending church said the most important outcome of worship was for some personal benefit. 29% said the most important outcome was to be more focused on God. And 20% had no idea why they were here. So if you are part of that 20%, just sit back, relax, and enjoy. I must start this morning's message with a disclaimer that sometimes historical information becomes somewhat blurred over time. My information was gleaned from articles that were written over the years by people from this area. Even at that, there are conflicting versions and dates of the various things that happened. It doesn't have to be that far back for conflicting information to be present. When either my wife or I start telling of some adventure we have had, each of our versions of the story sometimes don't match, and we were on the same trip and it wasn't that long ago. No discussion about the history of the Balzac United Church would be complete without starting with the Bennington United Church, as the two congregations are now combined. Some of you who are new to the church might ask where Bennington is. Well, most of Bennington is now within the city of Calgary and is located along Center Street North or Harvest Hills Boulevard. Starting as far back as 1883, Presbyterian and Methodist Saddleback preachers traveled to the Bennington community spreading the word of God. They were called saddleback preachers because they rode their horses from Calgary to the various farm and ranch houses where worship services were held. They later traveled by what was referred to as a horse and rig. One of the early pioneer families of the Bennington district that held services in their home were John and Elizabeth Lewis, who were Presbyterians. The Lewises left the comforts of Peel County in Ontario in 1889 at the bequest of their friends, the Lougheeds. You might recognize that name from Alberta politics. According to an account in the book, The Nose Creek Story, one of the things Mrs. Lewis missed most about her home in Ontario was the lack of any kind of religious services. As Deborah read from Psalm 63 this morning, Mrs. Lewis longed for her God. Her soul was thirsty. She thought of her God all night long. So prior to 1902, church services for the people of the Bennington District were held in the home of Joe and Elizabeth Lewis. The congregation soon became too large for their home, so when the Bennington School was built in 1902, church services were moved from the Lewis home to the school. Now a young man by the name of Jack Barker also came to the Bennington District in 1889. About four years after he arrived, he made an application for a homestead and in 1896, he received title to one quarter of land. Another old time family that also came from Ontario was, was the Adamses. Andrew Adams purchased a quarter of land in 1891. He returned to Ontario in the spring of 1892 and brought his two daughters, Elizabeth, 18 years old at the time, and Margaret, and two sons, John and Lorne, to his homestead in the Balzac area. His wife had died in Ontario in 1890. The reason I am telling you all this history is because Jack Barker and Elizabeth Adams were my maternal grandparents. They were married in 1899, and they were very instrumental in establishing the Beddington Presbyterian Church. In 1911, a few of the ladies of the Beddington area met in my grandparents' home to form a group called the Ladies' Aid Society that we now call the United Church Women. The topic of discussion was the building of a new church. That meant fundraising, so they held a strawberry social and the men canvassed the community for money. They also needed land, so on November 25, 1912, an agreement was signed whereby Jack and Elizabeth Barker donated one acre of land from their homestead for the new church. So on February 23, 1913, the new Beddington Presbyterian Church was opened. My grandparents were very community-minded people, and in addition to donating land for the school in 1902 and for the church in 1912, they also donated one acre for the Beddington Community Hall in 1922. 
Now these three buildings all sat next to each other on their own one acre parcels of land, starting at the south with the school, then the church, and then the hall. I can remember the people of the Beddington community referring to them as the halls of education, salvation, and damnation. I grew up on a farm about 200 meters north of these three institutions, and as a side note, I used to get paid 50 cents a Sunday to light the fire in the pot-bellied stove in the Bennington United Church. Now, 50 cents a week wasn't very much money for a teenager even in those days, so I used to supplement my meager church salary by taking a gunny sack with me when I went to light the fire and collected the empty beer and liquor bottles from the dances that were held in the Bennington Hall the night before. Oh, how times have changed. Back then you could smoke inside the hall, but you had to drink outside. But I digress. I guess the original church building had some building flaws, cold, drafty, and noisy when the wind blew. So in the summer of 1949, a team of men from the church community undertook to lower the walls, stucco the exterior, and line the inside with insulation wallboard. I think the inside and outside materials are still here today. The Bennington United Church celebrated 50 years of service in the spring of 1963. However, with a dwindling population, the church was closed in February 1968 and moved to become part of the Balzac United Church in March of 1968. As was the case at the Bennington United Church, church services in the Balzac area were held in the homes of the local pioneer families, such as the Adamses, <clears throat> the Graftons, who were Methodists, and the John Northcutts, also using saddleback preachers. As was the case in Bennington, as the homes got too small, the services were moved to the Dry Creek School, northwest of Balzac in 1908, and the Butte School, east of Balzac in 1903. The two school organizations joined together in 1930 when church services began to be held in the Balzac Hall and the Balzac United Church congregation was established. The Sunday school was held in the basement while the church service was held upstairs. One of the two acres at the Balzac Hall site was donated by George Barker, my grandfather's brother. The other acres were, acre was purchased from George for $60. In 1945, the McPherson Cooley School, which was located about three kilometers northwest of Airdrie, was purchased for $250 and moved to this location. The land for the church was donated by Mrs. Johnson, who was the landowner at that time. This building became the new meeting place of the Balzac United Church. The church was too small to hold the Sunday school for the children, as well as church services, so Alexa Church took a carload of children to Crescent Heights United Church in Calgary for one year. The following year, they used the same arrangement but went to Rosedale United Church, also in Calgary. As that arrangement was somewhat cumbersome, Sunday school was held in private homes for a while. After about 20 years of leading the Sunday school, Alexa Church decided to retire from the superintendent's position and as a result, Sunday school ended for a few years. In the early 1960s, Sunday school was established again with Kathy Shuttleworth and Connie James Sr. being the teachers. It was held one hour before the church service started, but there were problems as parents had nothing to do for the hour while their children were in Sunday school. To solve that problem, they held Sunday school in the Anglican church next door at the same time as the church service. That was certainly better than driving to Calgary. However, the Anglican congregation was growing and they needed their church for their own Sunday school. So once again, the Balzac Hall became the home for the Balzac United Church Sunday School until about 1968. At that time, the Bennington United Church had closed and arrangements were made to move the building to this site. The two buildings were joined together with a hallway running from the entrance of the Bennington Church building across to the rear of the Balzac Church building. The Bennington Church became the new sanctuary and the old Balzac Church became the Sunday School building. In 1986, a mobile home was purchased and was joined to the hallway between the two buildings and was used for a coffee area, nursery, and an extra Sunday school room. Up to that point, the Balzac Church was part of the Airdrie Pastoral Charge. As such, the Balzac United Church was responsible for some part of the minister's salary and related costs. When I was chair of the Airdrie Board, I remember going to Margaret Rush's home 
She was the Balzac's treasurer for 45 years from 1955 to 2000 to work out the annual financial arrangements. When the new manse was built in Airdrie, the Balzac congregation was deemed responsible for one-fifth of the cost. The Balzac church became independent of the Airdrie pastoral charge in 1987. In 1996, the congregation showed signs of growing, so in July of 1997, the Balzac congregation turned the sod on an addition to the church. Phase one would see an addition to the north and east of the old Bennington church building. The sanctuary became larger and the kitchen coffee area was added and the mobile home was removed to make way for two new bathrooms and the youth room along with a hallway. That left a small rectangular space between the east wall of the Bennington church and the new bathrooms and the youth room. There was a door between the second and third windows on the east wall of the Bennington Church building, you can see a dark spot on the wall, where you could exit the sanctuary and go into this small outside rectangular space. The story is told that a member of the congregation stuck out there to have a cigarette one Sunday, but didn't realize there was no handle on the outside of the door to allow him to get back in. After about three days, his wife missed him, and he was rescued. From then on, that little space became known as the heathen room. The church didn't have sufficient parking spaces for the new structure, so, so it obtained permission from the landowner to use the area north of the church where we park now and the Balzac Hall yard for parking. But since we didn't own either of these properties, it really didn't meet the requirement for parking. Eventually, the municipality relented and waived the parking requirement. A septic system was also added, and we made arrangements to hook into the water supply from the Balzac store. The new addition was dedicated on May 3, 1998. On May the 24th, 1998, the laying of the cornerstone was performed by M. W. Hugh Young, Grand Master of the Grand Lodge of the Alberta Masons. The cornerstone contains two time capsules, which contain the histories of the Balzac churches, land title documents, some money of the day, and a scroll indicating the names of all the people involved in laying of the stone. I'm not aware of any plans to open the time capsules any time in the near future. In 2003, phase two of the construction saw the original Balzac United Church, the old McPherson School, being demolished. The stained glass windows were saved and installed on the east wall of the Bennington Church. A new multi-purpose building was built with the top floor being used for the Sunday school and the bottom floor as the choir room. Under the stairs provided a much needed storage area. Even though the new building was erected on the same footprint as the old one, it did not meet the new setback requirements for the secondary highway running in front of the building. If the highway needed widening, the edge of the highway might be right next to our new building. At this time, the plans call for the highway to run on the south side of the Balzac Hall, so the problem of the highway being just outside our building is averted for now. As there was money left over from Phase 2, it was decided to do Phase 3 and close in the heathen room and place the third bathroom, the offering counting room, and the nursery in that area. The early church would not have functioned without the help of what was known as the Ladies Aid Society, which first started in Bennington area in 1911 and the Dry Creek area in 1925. These groups met on a monthly basis and had spiritual discussions as well as raised money for the church by holding pie socials, bazaars, teas, and bake sales, which is not much different than today except the whole congregation gets involved today. During the Second World War, the ladies' aid group made quilts and packed parcels that were sent overseas to the local youth who were serving in the forces. The ladies' aid was affiliated with the Women's Association of the United Church, so in 1942 the name was changed to the Balzac Women's Association. The name was changed again in 1962 to UCW, or the United Church Women. An interesting side note is that in the early days, the meetings were always held in people's homes and lunch was always served, and each host tried to outdo the previous host in terms of the quality and quantity of lunch served. 
They solved that competition problem by forming a lunch committee where the rule was only two items to eat. After several years of declining membership, the Balzac UCW held its last get-together on May 25, 2013. Over the years, there have been many changes. Schools were moved to become churches, buildings were renovated, and then eventually replaced by other new buildings. So if you are looking for a relationship with God, this building should provide you with a place to look for that relationship for many more years. A quote I found states that, the greatest use of life is to spend it for something that will outlast it. I'll repeat that. The greatest use of life is to spend it for something that will outlast it. This building is a testament to that quote. It has survived many and ha that have gone before us and it will be here for many years after we have gone. I refer again to Psalm 63. In the sanctuary, let me see how mighty are your works. Your constant love is better than life itself, and so I will praise you. Amen.